have you fuckers been? Long time no see. This is Janelle at the Firehouse in Buckley, Washington. And you're listening to Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars. Now back to the show. Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars, the podcast that blends the modern scooter lifestyle with a twist to the paranormal over a cool cocktail. Nice. (laughs) To be clear, this is an independent podcast that follows a group of modern and vintage Vespa riders in search of classic pubs, dive bars, and haunted taverns. Yeah, that just sounds so good. I know. It's not smart, though, is it? (laughs) No. (laughs) Or safe, but it's, um, it's pretty fun. As a disclaimer... We suggest you don't do this. So it's bar reviews, scooter talk, and a few ghost stories. Well, it sounds like it's most really people aren't doing thing. it anyway. <laughs> Again, I don't know why we need a disclaimer, but whatever. Yeah, so because you live on the edge, Lonnie, you, <laughs> as opposed to Mark and I. So welcome to episode 31. Mm, Last wow. of the year, probably. Uh, this one's called Tiger Man and Local Bar Frights. Oh, we're getting kind of long in the tooth on our. What do you like titles, about the bar? Don't you like bar frights? That's pretty catchy. Yeah, I made it up. I own it, trademarked <laughs> it. We'll be traveling from Tampa, Florida to Milton for a series of stories, even one about Grandma's ghost. Mm. So there's the Tiger Man and our local surprisingly haunted hangout that we had no idea. A new discovery. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So we have you today, Mark. Yep. You did I'm the here. opening. Nice job. The lizard. I'm back. And uh, Keith, a very bitter Keith, just called in and said, why are you doing this on a work day? Yeah. Apparently, he has a job. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get over it. I hope so. Well, so he did hang up on you. Tell us about our- I think uh, there's a friendship that needs to be repaired. Yeah, we'll be all right. I'll buy him a drink tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow's not a work day for him. <laughs> so what's been going on? Oh, I've just had a great, uh, well, good Christmas. Well, well, we got through Christmas. It's so what, what is a Swiss Christmas like? Is there hot chocolate? A lot of nettles. <laughs> nettles and, chocolate, and, yeah. and a son of bath. <laughs> and, oh, that's uh, Finnish. <laughs> and a, uh, a spritz of uh, schnapps in your coffee. Did you have some? I uh, had, Be- had some schnapps. Before noon? Uh, actually, Eric brought a bottle out of schnapps, and we toasted my father. Nice. Yeah. Oh, good. It was god-awful. So <laughs> the, the we'll schnapps. let you make the jokes. <laughs> How about you, Lonnie? What's been going on? Well, Christmas at my house was uh, as good as can be. All the kids came home and uh, had a great time with the family. Played 18 holes of golf this morning, which was a great way to start my Friday. And here we are. How'd you do? You do look great. I must have played well. I shot uh, 88, 44 on the front and 44 on the back. So uh, I I saw a picture. What kind of ball did you use? (laughs) That was my uh, chasing ghosts on scooters. In bars? Ball. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> what brand are they? I have a sleeve. There are Shricks on. And, they're, yeah. they're a ghost white. Yeah. And actually, I, 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 I like them for many reasons, but uh, yeah, it worked good today. Cool. So I have a new rack on my bike. You do? Yeah. What's, yeah, what's her name? Well, <laughs> it's a nice rack. It uh, goes with my flat, gel seat. I think I talked about that on the last podcast, but yeah. I got that sloped down gel, gel sleet, sheet seat and now i've added the the accompanying rack so it, it slopes down like that cafe racer thing when i ordered it i actually came up with two of them wow. and guess who got a gel seat for christmas the lizard the lizard the wow, li- he's already that. installed it guess who just sold him mine for a profit <laughs> <laughs> yeah That's i got, a I got the new gel seat and uh and i bought your extra rack right. and so we're going to be like twin brothers we, and we both have nice racks. <laughs> now, is, are these flat racks completely non-functioning? They're pretty much non-functioning, yeah. <laughs> but they look good. Yeah. I, I think so that's kind of like Maybe, you. you know what? what's cool about my new road podcast? <laughs> you, you look good, but My just new Roadcaster Pro. Don't function. We could call Andrew at Portland Investment and ask him, how do you put a bag on that thing? Because it'll just roll off and onto the ground. We can make phone calls with this yeah, thing? Yeah, it's got a Bluetooth Hold on, I, hookup. I wasn't really listening. What, what do you have here? Uh, don't worry about it. The other thing that I'm excited about, I'm be, I am will be installing my Tucano Urbano Thermo Scud leg cover. Uh-oh. What do you have oh, now? Oh, God. That's, that's my, you have the skirt that's my dress. That's my dress that oh, I okay. put on. That's what it's really called. Oh, you didn't get a new one. That's your... I didn't. Okay. I didn't. But I'm getting ready for some warmer cold weather, cold weather riding. Ooh. 
So to be fair, let's be transparent. How many times have we recorded this podcast? Um, this would be our second try. Yeah. What happened on the first one? Oh, it didn't go well. <laughs> yeah. We had our first epic fail <laughs> recording a podcast. We if, were past the Mendoza line. <laughs> a little tipped over. I really tried to say, let's not do this. You know, when we have to leave a bar on the third quarter, that's, that's not true. good. Well, and the fact that you'd started since 9 a.m., but um, the fact that you were the voice of reason, I you wanted to that's pull the reins which on that. Frightening. Which frightening. Which typically you're not. So that was very surprising. <laughs> yeah. Typically, you're like pushing, pushing, pushing. Until I go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm usually the first one in I'm bed. a little bit disappointed because I thought we had a good thing going. And I'm hoping we can use a piece or two from that failed effort because I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember any of it? <laughs> yes. Do you remember any of it? <laughs> I sat right here. <laughs> so uh, guess who I saw recently who I didn't want to ever talk about again? Janelle. Janelle, she opened the podcast for us. I Did know. you hear her? She sounded a bit, uh, bit perky. She well, was in a good mood. You know, when yeah. you catch her in a good mood, there's nobody better. Well, good mood. Gave she, me a hug. She's a uh, pro. When she's great, she's great. Yep. When she's not, she's not. <laughs> she's talking and it's about your guessing game. She's talking about moving playing. to Thailand or Bali. Still you know, getting out. Yeah, still. <laughs> She'll we'll see her next year up there at the <laughs> firehouse. Uh, I've been to Florida a couple of times since our last podcast. Um, but didn't you go twice in one week? Once? Yes, I did. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like been fun. real busy. I got to know Tampa. I, I walked the river walk, um, spent some time in New Smyrna Beach. We're very popular there. I had no idea. Oh, you know really? why? All the Boston Whaler guys, you know, we're uh, Boston Whaler dealer, right. listen to the podcast. So there you go. Really? Yeah. I had a whaler once. Yeah, you did. I had two whalers. You had two whalers. <laughs> <laughs> and now you've moved up with a bay lighter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I also saw my sister. She sold her little ranch down in Lewis County and uh, moved, guess where? To Buckley. Oh. Guess what's in Buckley? Go. <laughs> Hello, Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not Still worry about that. Still working out the kinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the wrong panel. I was going to do the harp music. Oh. oh that would have been nice, yeah. We are recording this first podcast on this Roadcaster Pro that I put on line, let everybody see, and uh, we're doing it live, so we can't stop. We just got to keep going. We used to put these segments together and then edit them oh, they, together. They could tell. <laughs> <laughs> we can add all kinds of effects, do all kinds of things. It's really cool. We're still learning about it. Sorry if it gets a little mixed up, but uh, there you go. Hey, are you following us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook? How about you, Mark? Always. You count me in. You're kind of a surfer. You look over people's <laughs> shoulder, right? Uh, just search Scooters, Ghosts, and Bars, and we'll pop up. Lonnie, you follow us. I do. We'd really appreciate your um, your comments, uh, subscribing to us, have your friends subscribe. It, it really helps us. Uh, you're, it, it, it helps us climb up. That's how we continue to hold our position as? The number one scooter podcast in the world that's right that features ghosts and bars well that's true but you know it could be just the, the first column or one or the other <laughs> also i'd like to welcome our new listeners in peru no way what's the language what's the language in peruvian, peruvian? is it portuguese no peruvian oh is that in <clears throat> that's in uh, brazil it's portuguese right yeah. we also have uh, listeners Portugal. in indonesia and bangladesh Wow. So uh, thanks, thanks for uh, a, signing up. Wide reach you got, going and on. what are you people thinking? <laughs> <laughs> all the, all we are is background noise for them to go to sleep. Hey, is this if we're in Peru? Does that mean we're getting closer to the cartel? You know, back in the eighties. <laughs> also, uh, if any, if you or anybody else, if you have a ghost story, a cryptid story, a UFO story, anything paranormal. Uh, we'd love to share it on the podcast. Uh, just send us an email with a file in it to Mark H at chasingghost.net or record it on your phone voice recorder and send it to us or send it through our website. Anywhere you can find us, you can send us a direct message. That would be really cool if you did that. Okay? We, would, we would love that. Yeah. Um, Has anybody donated yet? Donated. Money? Uh, money. No, I still haven't set that up. Oh. But we're going we're gonna to be in need of it. This uh, Roadcaster thing was pretty expensive. Oh, so uh, how about those Seahawks? <laughs> <laughs> so much for the capital call that we have here. So, um, yeah, guess what time it is? Is it that time already? Already. We're ready for Scooter News. 
All right, Lonnie, you put this together. You put the first story together. Tell us what it's all about. Well, so that from what I read the other day in India, which is a population of 10 billion or something. Yeah, crazy. Might, might be just a little more than 10 million. No, I said billion. billion with a oh, B. Billion. Oh, billion. Um, anyway, they, um, their scooter numbers, their scooter sales are down. And from what I read, it was down 750,000 units last year, which wow. is about equal to all the units that Harley Davidson sells in this country in a year. Or worldwide, actually. Or worldwide, yeah. yeah. And so it what's turned, causing this? It turns out that a couple of things. A, they lowered their denominations of their currency. No more big bills. I think they maybe they had hundreds or five hundreds or whatever their currency is there. And they, they I have a hundred in my pocket. And guess <laughs> where I got yeah, it? I know. <laughs> I sold my rack. <laughs> my really nice rack. <laughs> and they are trying to discourage cash deals because with the cash deals they don't necessarily necessarily collect any any sales tax or whatever tax they charge. Uh-huh. And also they instituted a five year mandatory insurance policy when you buy a scooter. And so it's kind of putting the brakes on people just going out and, and grabbing a scooter or paying cash and grabbing a scooter because of those restrictions. On the way they drive too, if you have to have insurance you're screwed. Well, yeah. Have you watched the, what goes on well, over there? I mean, they are wild ass drivers. I would say no insurance for anybody because it's just a <laughs> yeah. no it's fault a deal. Yeah. 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 But think about that. With that many scooter riders in India, I'm thinking about taking a trip on behalf of this podcast and doing some sales work in <laughs> India. Um, I'm, 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 you have to, somebody's got to save the industry. <laughs> Maybe the lizard will change his name to Gandhi or something like that, and I'm going to take. I'm going to go over there and see if I can generate some business. Maybe you could be Gizzard. Gizzard. <laughs> well, I got this. I got my sandals and my long white <laughs> robe thing, and uh, I'm I'm pretty confident do I you can have drum a, up some business. Do you have a walking staff? I. You need a walking stick. I I should have a walking stick. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on that. But I, I we got to we got to get our numbers up because that's like the scooter capital of the of the world. It's got to be. That or China. Well, it's got to be India. Well, China's got to well, be Well, Thailand, you know, yeah, Malaysia, all those areas are huge, huge scooter areas. Right. And, and of course, Edgewood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just the sheer volume of people in India or China has got to be. Yeah. Well, and like I said, Vietnam and all those areas yeah. are just, it's all huge. But I think India is, is actually one of the best. You know, I, I have a story for Scooter News. You do? Did you write this into the script? Or I did. I did I, it's right here. It's in your, okay. it's in your sheets. But uh, <laughs> that's not the only thing. But this is one that my, my my son Davis alerted me about. And it's a story called "The Cat Parasite That Sells Motorcycles." So here's one for you. Is the, this scooter news or spooky news? This is this is scooter news. Okay. So the protozoa Toxoplasma gondu makes an unobtrusive home in nearly every warm-blooded species. But its uh, prolific life is limited. It can only reproduce in cat stomachs. So, yeah. so it's something that starts up inside the cats. In some of you are cat lovers, not me exactly. I have two cats. Right, I know that. The parasite, which causes mild to non-existent flu-like systems, has a clever trick to make sure it winds up where it wants to be. Toxo-infected rats are completely healthy, but abnormally attracted to eat cat urine. Okay, and the more and, and more and they're more active than usual, right? So that's how it stays alive because these these rats are attracted to the urine. The cats wait for them; they they eat them. You know how that goes. So there you go. How do you like that? And here I thought Ricky Ticky Tavi <laughs> and the market and, and on, the connection uh, to the scooter scooter world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, <laughs> yeah, where are they selling motorcycles? <laughs> okay, there's more to this about that, but uh, there's a. Uh, a more ongoing, less fearful rat makes uh, an more easy on, snack right. for the cat, so it's good for the parasite survival strategy, but there's a catch for us. Toxoplasma messes with human brain chemistry in much the same way as it does with rodents. The effects are sex-dependent. Toxo makes men more distrustful of authority, more jealous, and more likely to engage in rule-bending and breaking. Oh, it's kind of like vodka. Yes. <laughs> Male <laughs> motorcyclists are disproportionately. Dis, thank you. 
I'm, I'm reading to the left here. Uh, they're affected. In a perverse twist, motors, uh, motorists of either sex who have it are three to four more times likely to die in car and motorcycle accidents. Hmm. So oh. there you go, because they, they feel more confident, they feel bolder, they do stupid things, and yes. they're, they're resistant to fuck authority, right? <laughs> uh, there's even shaky evidence that the, that the, uh, the T. Gandhi correlates with success on the football field, at least predicting the winners of the World Cup. Huh. It's a, an amazing story. We could do a whole podcast on that. Yeah, we should. Uh, sw- uh, women get the sweeter half of the brain parasite. Women harboring the Gandhi are considered by others to be more cheerful, warm-hearted, and sexually attractive. They're also huh. well, outspend their unaffected sisters when it comes to clothing. In some ways, it's the microbial mascot of romantic comedies, <laughs> <laughs> turning women into spendy social butterflies and their dates into over-masculine dolts. Whoa. Okay. So before you go out and find some infectious cat feces to gussy up your social appeal— It's important to point out that the personality changes are statistically significant, but only minor. Researchers still disagree on how and even if toxo alters behavior. It could be that the personality predisposes people to the infection, not the other way around. Uh, So they throw that disclaimer in at the very end. Yeah, just a little something to protect them. And um, that was from the website. Kind of sounds like our disclaimer at the beginning. Or from the writer Allison Guy. Well, I'm still going to stick with vodka. It seems to work for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, it'll kill those parasites in your stomach, too. <laughs> there you go. There you have it. Interesting news. Yep. Guess what time it is? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> time for spooky news. From one end of the other. <laughs> what do you think of that? I'll tell you what, I'm excited about your new toy. I am, too. But my spooky news sheet disappeared. Well, we can hear you shuffling paper right now. Well... That's what I do. Can you grab your spooky news? Here we go. Spooky news. This is from the website Oddity Central. It's not a ghost story, but it's plenty creepy and spooky because you never know what a human is uh, capable of doing. What part of the world? Um, This is from Calgary. Up north, okay. No, it isn't. Yeah, Calgary's north of us. Yeah, but I I just, (laughs) I I don't think it actually is. It says category. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you must be reading to the right now. <laughs> okay, here you go. Here's the headline. And then I'll tell you the hook after it. Man cooks and eats his own finger after losing it in an accident. Guess how he lost his finger? Slicing and dicing. In a motorcycle accident. Mm. Okay, he lost Another a finger parasite. and part of his hand after a motorcycle accident. But instead of simply throwing away the amputated digit, he took it home, cooked it, and ate it, and even kept the bones as a souvenir. Oh, he intentionally ate his, did He you? did, he did. Yeah, that's a little psychotic. Surgeons told, his name was Playperts, that they had to amputate one of his fingers after it turned black following a motorcycle accident. The man's from Essex, so it's, he's English. He asked the doctors if he could take it home with him after the procedure, and they had no objections. David says that he had always been curious about cannibalism and what human flesh would taste like, but the fact that getting around to eating another person is illegal. So he had never actually satisfied his curiosity. So sucking dick wasn't enough for him? <laughs> only, <laughs> only if he took a bite of it. Ooh. It squeezed. <laughs> only now he had his own finger to munch on, and when it finally occurred to him that no one would be able to drag him to court for consuming his own flesh, he decided to eat it and keep the bones. But curiosity wasn't the only reason that convinced him to go through with this bizarre plan. I know it sounds mad, but it wasn't just the curiosity. That finger was a big part of me. Too big to lose, he told Love It magazine. I decided that if I ate the flesh and kept the bones, then I wouldn't be losing part of me. Oh, boy. So there you go. What do you think of that? That's uh, that's beyond spooky. That might be a whole other category. uh, Yeah, that's disturbing news. So there it is. There's our news (laughs) flashes for the day. Did it taste like chicken or what? (laughs) Uh, Did you say anything about the taste? It didn't. It didn't, but it would, had turned black, so it was like dry-aged, 29 days, <laughs> like a good piece of beef. Wow. This is Nicole, and this is Tari, at Anchor and Brine in Tampa, Florida, and you are listening to Chasing, Chasing Ghosts on, on scooters, scooters in Bars. Wow. We're back. Here's our Tampa. Wow. 
On my recent trip to Tampa, I was at a conference. On the Riverwalk. And I was on the Riverwalk at a sidewalk bar and uh, getting some exercise. Uh, where I so met, you were doing push-ups uh, yeah. on, on the sidewalk? <laughs> well, it's a shot drink, no push-up. <laughs> and I met Nicole and actually Tyree, who was on there, and shared a nice. she shared a nice ghost story. And I thought I'd get that to get that started to today. What do you think? Let's, let's hear it. Let's hear Nicole's little story. I'm with Nicole in Tampa, Florida, and she's going to tell us a really heartwarming story about her grandma. Yeah, so when I was about seven or eight, um, I was in the kitchen um, just getting some food, and it was late at night, um, and I had an urge to just look at my door uh, leading into my mudroom. Um, It's a window-style door, so you could see right through it, and um, all of a sudden, I just saw the figure of my grandmother, Um, and she was staring at me, smiling back at me. Um, and I just, it was a great feeling to have, you know. Had she passed? Yes. Um, How soon? This, um, I don't know, I want to say like maybe a year. Wow, she came yeah. back to see it. Yeah. So. Well, thanks, thanks, Nicole. Of course. This is very cool. Yeah. Well, there you have it. There's, there's a heartwarming story about seeing your grandma and it made her feel good. You get all kinds of stories, I guess. I was in a bar. Yep. There you go. The I cats. captured it. <laughs> you're working even when you're not working. So so have you heard of that? There's a lot of family members that come back and of visit. grandparents dying? Yeah. Yeah, well, they do that, but they come back and see the grandkids, and they they're, they're, there must be this period of time, I don't know, where they're just cruising around, or maybe people can come back and forth. I don't know, but there's a lot of stories like this. Tons of them. You've probably heard a few. Uh, only on the podcast. <laughs> I'd like to see my grandparents again. Well, wouldn't that be cool if they yeah. sl- slid in and, and uh, gave you a little wave through the screen door? Mine, mine beat me. <laughs> I think well, I'm you're okay. Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Brooke from the mill in Milton, Washington, and you're listening to Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars. From my little house that we're in, we're in our new little podcast studio here, right, right. with our Roadcaster Pro. Beautiful machine. It is. It is an eight minute and 17 second walk to my local bar, which is uh, called The Mill in Mil- Milton, Washington. I don't live in Milton, but the bar is in Milton. I have to walk to another town, Jeez, but it only takes me guy. eight minutes and 17 seconds uh, if I jaywalk. <laughs> and we may have brought this place up a few times in the podcast. We certainly go there pretty frequently. Right. We're starved for a decent bar within walking distance of this area. Well, they, I do know the last time I was in there, they all know you by name and, and your brother, Bob. Well, remember the last time we were there was last week when we watched the Seahawks game and then Try. attempted to podcast after the game. <laughs> well, yeah, we were at the Mexican joint for three quarters oh, yeah. and did one quarter there. And the, they were pouring some drinks at that, me- at that joint. They yeah, were, they took care of us. Oh, I'm not sure that's the right word for it. <laughs> oh, they took care of it. <laughs> Man. Uh, this place is an easy choice for us for like as a sports bar yep. and a happy hour to meet uh, is centrally located uh, occasional meal. The food's actually pretty good and it's a, a central pre-ride meeting place, right? We meet up there yep. and then, yep. and then take off. So it's, it's just a local place. You don't really think about all that much, even though I know they're very proud of it. It's a very nice place, but it's just so close. You go there so often. It, it, it checks becomes, a lot of our boxes. Yeah. So I was chatting with Brooke, who's, who's a server there, and also uh, has been a model down in L.A., a very, um, very handsome girl. Yeah, handsome girl. is a good way to yeah. describe a girl. Um, she's also a <laughs> server there, and as a kind of a lark, I asked her, is, is this place haunted? And because we, we generally ask, we go all, all over the place asking people we had never asked there. It's not an old building. Uh, it's, not at all. It's uh, in a shopping center parking lot. You know, it's its own building, but it's sitting in the, in that parking lot. But it was vacant for about eight years, so it yeah. it didn't have a, it had Mr. A's that was in there. They went out of business. It only had uh, infested mice and rats and cats. Right? Maybe that's why we feel so emboldened <laughs> while we're there. That doesn't last long. Once we get home, that feeling's gone. <laughs> it surprised me when she said, "Yeah, we think it is haunted." She recommended that I speak with Ray, who was um, one of the closing managers, and he's usually there on Sunday afternoon, late Sunday afternoon when I go in there. He has a great voice. And so I, I got with Ray, and I said, hey, I hear you have a story for me. And uh, he said, 
man, do I? Mm-hmm. This this is crazy. So I, I thought what we would do is is listen to Ray's story first and then kind of talk about it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm with Ray at uh, at the mill. Correct. In Milton. Correct. Washington. Yes. And uh, this is my local bar I can walk to from my house. And I've been coming here off and on when it was different names for years, but I've traveled all over the West Coast, lo- you know, looking for haunted bars. I had no idea. There was that- one right in your backyard. Yeah. So tell tell us your story. What happened? All right. So uh, I, I'm one of the bartenders. I'm the closing manager generally in every night. So at the end of the night, I always close, lock up the place. Everyone's out of here except for me while I do all the books and uh, deposit the money and everything. I was uh, finishing up my work inside of the bar and I decided to walk over. Or I had to bring my bus tub and everything back to the back so I could clean it and get it ready for tomorrow and while I was on my way back to the back all the lights are off all the doors are locked there's no one in here except for me I walked out of the bar area into the restaurant side and we have a a server station where we keep our menus and books and all kinds of stuff over there anyway I'm walking with uh with my everything in my hands and all of a sudden a stack about an inch thick of menus flies up off of the counter, not falls, doesn't doesn't slide off like you would anticipate a menu would if it got a draft or something like that. It was actually literally looked like someone grabbed the whole stack and threw it in the air and it was raining menus. I stop in my tracks when I see that. Yeah. And all of a sudden I hear a little and I turn and I see a silhouette run across the glass windows that separate the two rooms, the bar and the restaurant. It was uh, very bone chilling and I'm not a, the type that would ever say anything about a ghost story. I've never told one before because I've never had one to tell. So yeah. it was kind of kind of crazy overall. And how long ago was it? It was about a year ago now. Um, it's uh, December fifteenth ish right now, so it was about about a year ago from from this date. But there's other people have seen things and heard things here, right? Yeah, correct. I, I've actually seen myself one other time after I locked the place and actually walked out of the building. I was parked outside with my headlights pointing in towards the bar, and I kind of uh, just looked in just kind of as I was letting my car warm up and I noticed a silhouette about a, a, a man size about my size uh, just walked behind the bar and at first I literally thought I locked somebody in the building and they were coming behind the bar so I actually got out of my car and looked inside and then there was nothing in there which was kind of bone chilling it actually gave like the, made the hairs on my arm stand up um, also one of our dishwashers was back there cleaning one day and uh, he was doing his work with his music on and all of a sudden he just felt like something was around him and he kind of looked out of his peripheral and he said he could see like a like a silhouette basically of something standing there and he kind of tried to try to glance over without you know startling anything and as he turned it disappeared like it was smoke that just evaporated into the air wow and, and then you showed me a video yeah the video is crazy <laughs> uh the video that we have is that it actually was pulled by our owners. It was a uh, our surveillance cameras inside of the building. It's not doctored. It was a direct pull off of it, and it was uh, it was a table. There was not a single soul on the restaurant side at all when this video was taken. Uh, one of our hostesses was walking through the bar. We set silverware on our tables that are wrapped up in the napkins that they sit in. Uh, so they're pretty heavy. If you wanted to unroll one first off, it would make a ton of noise because the silverware would fall everywhere. The video we have is of uh, uh, a napkin being pulled off of the table, and you can tell it's being pulled and out, of the, out yeah. of the loop, unrolling the silverware while not disturbing anything else, but pulling it lifts and then drops on the ground. At that time, one of our hostesses was walking by and saw it and literally looked down, looked at the table. She assumed someone was in the booth because the way it fell off of there, and there was no one there. So that's when she walked to the back and told the owners, and they pulled this video that we have. Yeah, unbelievable. It was it was crazy, uh, and I joke with people about ghosts in here, but I've seen it, and I'm not that guy. So <laughs> it's pretty 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 cool, actually. I think it's kind of <laughs> kind of a neat thing. They seem like they don't hurt anybody or harm no, anybody. No, no. And if there's a ghost here now listening to us talk, speak right into this phone and make a noise. That's called an EVP, by the way. I was doing an interview and. Uh, <laughs> Randy's attic in Tacoma, yeah. and we had that happen. We're just talking like this, and a, a voice came in and said, "Hi." Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. I've so, never, I've never heard anything like that before, and uh, also, yeah. Uh, also, I mean, it was just, it was just kind of a creepy experience because, like, I'm not a, not the guy that you know even talks. I don't watch paranormal shows on TV. I don't listen to the podcasts that talk about them necessarily. I like entertainment just like anyone else, but. 
this literally happened to me, and wow. I've never had anything like it before or since. Great, great story. Thanks, Ray. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Right. So there you go. And that's our wow. neighborhood neighborhood bar. Wow, well, I do. <laughs> so two things. A, Ray has got a voice, man. That guy's got some pipes. Yeah. Um, here's my theory. I think that ghost is Bob Knutson. Remember Bob Knutson? I do. He owned that whole shopping center. I, he developed that whole thing. He developed that whole shopping center over there, and he had a passion for the restaurant business, I think just because, like us, he kind of wanted to have his own bar. And remember, he first had the restaurant up there on the corner. Right, or the Hollywood video. Bought him out. And so we built a new restaurant because he wanted a bar. He didn't know shit about the business, didn't make any money. <laughs> I'm pretty sure well, he made dead. a lot of money though. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't make any money in the restaurant business, but that was his corner. That was his thing. Yeah. And uh, when I hear that story from Ray, I think, I think it's Bob Knutson. Well, yeah, except that he said they were running really fast. Bob was a big guy. <laughs> Maybe True. he came back at his, as as a, a, at his favorite age. <laughs> as a ghost, you can be a little lighter on your feet. <laughs> Well, yeah, Ray did a nice job, and you know he's completely believable when he tells that story, and you can tell he never believed in anything like that until it happened to him. So it was actually pretty cool. And you saw some footage. I saw the footage. He showed it to me, and then I also spoke uh, with the owner down there, and and he's going to try to get it to me so we can post it mm-hmm. on our Facebook page. Uh, but I I watched it, and you can you can see Kathy. I don't know if you remember who Kathy is. She right. comes and says hi to us. She's a hostess there. She's walking in. So the camera's looking back at her at the far end of the building, and the booth is on the right. Do you see this thing get picked up, unrolled with the silver or clattering to the floor, and the napkin goes down? And there's nobody in the booth. Wow. And, and the other two, there's three of those on that table. Just one of them gets flipped up and rolls down. Wow. So I, I had a little conversation with Kathy. Well, let's hear that. Yeah. she. Uh, I talked to her the other day because she just had something, and, and it doesn't sound very significant, but for her, it scared her. And then we cover a little bit with the video. So, so here's here's her comments about this recent experience. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Mark. You work at the mill. I do. And the mill's haunted. I think so. You, well, you've seen it. I have experienced it. Something just happened. What happened? Uh, this last past Saturday night. Yes. I was in the office by myself, but the door closed. Yeah. And I think I heard two, sounded like two pennies falling on the floor. Is that what happened? I don't know. But, I heard it. But you also saw the... Silverware. Yeah, tell us that story. What happened? I was coming out of the kitchen on the far side of the dining room. Nobody was in the dining room. Nobody had been yet. What time of day? Um, probably around noon, 11.30. So early, early. So early, because we opened at 11, but we hadn't had any customers yet, and I'm walking down the aisle, and silverware just jumps off the table. I stopped in my tracks, I looked at it, I looked around, and nobody. So I just kept walking. Wow. There's a video of that, too, on the security camera? There is. <laughs> yeah, we're going to share that. Okay. All right, thanks, Kathy. You're welcome, Mark. Total. Two people, same story. That's yeah. uh, plus, you know, other the dishwasher had an experience right. that Ray talked about. I mean, you talk to anybody there, and they, they all agree that there's something going on. I would have never guessed that so, building was haunted. Here's what I'm thinking: chasing ghosts on scooters and bars does an after hours ghost hunt at the mill. Okay, can I just remind you of our last after hours ghost hunt? I don't remember where was that. The little red Robin Hood. Cottage. Oh, though, yeah. That was fun. <laughs> How'd that go? Well, we did. I did it twice <laughs> that there. Was, that, that wouldn't have recorded either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I couldn't even listen to it. We had like eight people sitting around a table, and they were. Yeah, that was that was actually fun though. So while we were there at, at the mill, and we've been well, which time, right? But right. we we were talking about the ghosts and that sort of thing. We met a, a nice guy named John. He overheard some of our conversations about hauntings, and and we started talking to him. And he mentioned that uh, he grew up in the Midwest, and he grew up in a known to be haunted house. So we collected his story. I mean, it was sort of fit into the mill. We we're down there doing all this, and and, and you got to remember this this was over several different visits. These different stories that we're collecting, it isn't just one day. Well, but because you are there like four or five times a week. That's well, I have a mill card <laughs> and your own parking spot <laughs> and a set of keys. 
Anyway, I am learning. I'm learning a lot about that. Thing. He's Otis of Milton. It's eight minutes and seventeen seconds away. He lets himself in and out. So um, anyway, John John had a pretty good story. So let's let's take a listen to it. This is being recorded in the mill, but it's not about the mill. It's about John and um, the Tiger Man. John, we're going to talk about the Tiger Man doll and growing up in a haunted house in Michigan. Let's go. All right, we'll do. As I was previously saying, the house I grew up in was rumored to be haunted. It, in 1904, the Arbutus Banks Hotel was erected. It lasted 20 or 30 years or so. Uh, one wing was cut off, and it was turned into a house, privately owned by, I forgot her first name, but her last name was Davis, so Mrs. Davis, a short red-haired lady, was rumored to haunt the house. Uh, her death certificate was filled out incorrectly, so to this day she is still legally alive. So she's there. She was rumored to haunt the house. And like I said, strange things would happen in that house, most of which I could debunk, and because the foundation was built out of limestone, which is porous and subject to water, and the house was lakefront property, so of course the soil is wet. The foundation shifted about nine inches, was reinforced twice with different types of bricks, but nonetheless one half of the house was higher than the other, so doors would slam shut by themselves, but when you put a door frame or a house frame under tension or torque, things are going to bend, doors are going to close by themselves, windows will break by themselves. It's just part of the foundation shifting. That part we could explain. Lights would randomly turn on and off, but once again, the wiring was 1904. We ripped all the electrical wiring out, we replaced all the electrical wiring, lights stopped turning on and off by themselves. So that one could be explained as well. We debunked most of the haunted theories. The, the, the one thing that always, I don't want to say creeped me out, but I couldn't quite explain, is as a child, probably first or second grade, I had a little Tiger Man toy uh, from Buck Rogers in the 21st century. Tiger Man was the bad guy. One of my favorite bad guys, except for Darth Vader. He's always the coolest bad guy ever. But, uh, so my Tiger Man toy fell. I was sitting at the dining room table. I dropped it. I slid my chair back. I looked down. I didn't see it. I looked around and didn't find it. Asked my mom, hey, mom, I just dropped my toy. Help me find it. We never found it. Seven years later, we moved out of that house. Never showed up. Never found it. Wow. That's the one I can't explain. So you got one back. How'd that happen? My wife and I split up for a little while. So it was sort of a peace offering one day. She uh, she came over to my the apartment I was living at the time and bought me a new Tiger Man doll. <laughs> you still have it? I still have it. I will keep it forever. Tiger, Man, it Tiger Man is back. Never take it out of the box. It's going to stay intact. It's going to stay in the box. I'm going to keep it forever. That's so cool. Thanks, John. My pleasure. <laughs> uh, Tiger Man. The Tiger Man. <laughs> Actually, it was. It's, think about that, though. A little kid drops his toy sitting at the table onto the floor, and it completely disappears. It never reappears even after seven years. Were they hoarders? They have a lot of shit in the No, I, you know, I didn't get that sense. He was very neat. A good neat. journalist, Baba Wawa, would have asked him a follow-up <laughs> question or two. <laughs> so, I don't know. What do you think, Lonnie? I, that's a strange story. I, I believe it. So, one thing, he mentioned the limestone. Limestone is also known to be a conductor of paranormal energy, uh, that the, the this old stone track theory that paranormal or, or highly emotional things get get imprinted on the um, on the on the rock and then replays those are the, the residual hauntings that you see that mm. really aren't intelligent that they go through but limestone plays a big part as does water Michigan land of oh wait that's 10, Minnesota 000. that's Minnesota You're right so anyway uh, maybe he'd live in the upper PI and didn't Tim Robbins break out of uh, Shawshank due to limestone? Did he carve his way through it? Well, it's so, went, it's yeah. a softer one. Yeah, he went right through way it. Way to bring in the Shawshank. Right. Stephen King. There you go. He wrote that. He oh, wrote he did? It. Yeah. I didn't know he was in jail that long. <laughs> no, he didn't write it well. Hitler wrote a little something in jail, too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, to our listeners, uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to our first podcast on the Roadcaster Pro, where we recorded the whole thing live from beginning to end. I think we need some feedback Unbelievable. On yeah. It's really cutting into our drinking time. <laughs> yeah. I know. We're sitting here with full drinks. And we're like, what? when do we drink? So uh, we've been musing about uh, not a lot about scooters, a little bit uh, more about ghosts on this one. Oh, it is wintertime. And a uh, little bit about bars. And uh, a thank you to the Mill uh, Steakhouse and Spirits in Milton, Washington, for uh, being great sports about this and, and talking to us. Really appreciate it. Thanks to Weeknights for the original music. Thanks for uh, Pendamonono for calling in advance and hanging up on us. 
and uh, the grizzly vet also called while we were oh, while we were sitting here. So I think what they do is they know we're recording and they just want to fuck with us <laughs> a little bit. So until then, be uh, be safe out there. Do you have a th- anything to say about that? Uh, no, just uh, happy New Year. Yeah, Hope felt- 2020 treats everyone right. Yeah, head on a swivel, keep the rubber side down, and you know we are not doing another podcast until we ride because we haven't ridden for together for but a we, while yeah we rode uh, well need, you're right we, we, three of us. we haven't yeah. done it yeah all right well um this is copyright 2019 by chasing ghosts on scooters and bars Bam.